Hey guys, today I am going to talk about Magic the Gathering being really, really expensive to play. And obviously the first thing I'm going to mention is our Modern Horizons 2. We collector's edition and we finally have a price point for that. Let me remind you that it's not, it's 12 packs. I think it's 12 packs. All the collector's editions are 12 packs. And there are enemy fetch lands in them. So they're selling for over 400, about 420 right now pre-sale. And many people believe that's actually too low. And we just had Time Spiral Remastered, which I thought felt was a very strong set. I mean, literally it took some of the most valuable cards in Modern, gave them an old card frame to make them even more valuable. And then it had, instead of printing just like, let's say Future Sight, which probably would be enough, they re they took all the good cards in Future Sight, Plane Shift, and Time Spiral and combined them into one box. <laughs> so there's not as much draft chaff, right? Because it's all the it's just all the, the hits, basically, which we already know because we can take a look and see what cards are valuable. This is all the most valuable cards from those set. And as I mentioned before, this makes sense to me. I want to draft old sets. I remember old so Time Spiral remastered isn't really for me. But if they did Innistrad remastered, the original Innistrad remastered, I would I would buy that. It's a lot of fun to draft in a strad. Um, it reminds me of a very good time in my life in uh, law school. And if they did Lorwyn remastered, which I think is a real possibility, that I would love. I would love that. That was our Dissension or Ravnica remastered because that was when I was in college and um, my freshman year. It was Dissension. I went to pre-release uh, with some of my friends at NYU, and I had a blast. I would definitely buy Ravnica, original Ravnica remastered. I would buy so many of that just to draft from my old friends from NYU, should they come here. You know, Houston is kind of a big hub now, and I'm ready to, you know, see friends again. We're ready, the, the whole CDC thing about no not wearing them out. I think it's good. I mean, they say we don't need a mask anymore if we're vaccinated, inside or outside. So I would definitely want to draft more and I'm willing to pay a higher premium. And I think it's very reasonable. Time Spiral Remastered for 200 bucks or 240 or 250, you know, inflation is quite reasonable compared to a future site box, which goes for a 1500 <laughs> alone. And it's not even as good. You open the future site box, you might get 50 bucks. You open Time Spiral Remastered box for 250, probably get about 200 retail. Like it's a lot better. I mean, the future site box, unless you hit like a foil, there's no way you're making back your 1500. The time trial remastered, there's like, I think a 15 or 20% chance retail again that you can break even. It's not bad, that, that's not bad. I, I take that over 0% chance in future site. Like the original future site box, which would be so silly for you to open. All right, now, Let's talk about the expensive things in Magic. Collector's Edition, I never liked it. I like, I love it for Modern Horizons too because that's why I always felt it would be. I always felt it would be a really great thing for Modern to have. I don't think that the same way for Standard because in Standard there's something called Rotation and Rotation plummets the price of any of these cards. Now I guess the other thing I should say is do I like this box more than I like reserve list cards? No, but reserve list cards are very hard to buy. I kid you not, they are drying up. So from a store perspective, uh, let me tell, tell you how it went. So in 2015, Alpha and Beta, mainly Beta would still come in my store. And then around 2015, the end of 2015, I realized that, wait a second, it's been like a few months since we got anything. From that point on, I mean, we would get the random alpha beta card but we wouldn't get very much then we got unlimited so from 2016 to 17 we got unlimited we got lots of unlimited in and i didn't think it was very valuable because again this trend is going to continue this is not like a uh, good story for me you know it doesn't paint me as like some type of ntg finance genius because otherwise i would have kept those cards and i would have bought more in at the time again hindsight is 2020 so now i'm like oh cool unlimited's coming in Today, it's revised. <laughs> revised somehow, some way is impossible to get your hands on. And you can tell by the prices of these cards. I mean, I never thought a 
revised Syrian dragon would be worth as much as it is worth today or a revised demonic. I mean, demonic kind of makes sense, but not like the price that is wheel. <laughs> wheel is so expensive. So I, I'm just going to go ahead. And I'm just going to say what I feel about this situation. I think it's very funny to me because when I look at Magic the Gat, when I think about Magic Guard, I really put my brain to think about it. $400 a box of Modern Horizons 2 Collector's Edition isn't that bad. It's damn expensive. And if you if we went back two years ago, no one would think anyone would have any interest in buying $400 a box. But the collector's market as the way that it is, basketball, baseball, all these other sports indicate that $400 a box is pennies. Like that's just your typical box now that you open. And that blows me away because, so in basketball, baseball, like I said, they have prism and stuff like that. It's not uncommon that hobby box, which this is, is. So in those, and I'll just take basketball. Prism has retail for $19.99. Scalpers, you know, buy it on mass, and they, you know, that's why Target now has its new policy where they're not going to allow you to, they're not going to sell Pokemon for the safe and, and basketball for the safety of their employees and the safety of, I guess, their customers as well. Even though, you know, a customer pulled a gun on another customer just so they could get some Pokemon packs. It's wild right now. Like if you are a collector, it's paradise because everything you own is now just like five times more valuable every day. And it doesn't surprise me. So the what Wizard of the Coast has done, which they're really good at doing, is they copied an idea. The idea was very simple. In basketball, you have Prism 1999 retail packs. Retail, uh, they call it a blaster box, right? Or select, I'll take select. They have select and then they have select hobby. This is the hobby version of Modern Horizons. So they have the retail version, which is the regular Modern Horizons two booster packs and or the draft pack or some something like that, right? And then they have the hobby version, which is what has existed in sports cards forever. So this idea of a four hundred, five hundred dollar box, collector's edition box, has always existed in other hobbies. It has always existed in um sports cards. They have the retail version, which again is kind of expensive now because of the demand. But previously, you could get it, and you could, just, and you wouldn't really open that much, right? Then they have the upper end version, which is around four hundred dollars. The price point that they have isn't crazy to me, because I know that's what they do in sports cards. So that's why this game has got so expensive because Magic has seen what other people have done, and they finally copied it. And many years later, this is what we have. We have a $420 hobby box, right? And in sports cards, the hobby boxes, they have the autographs, they have the uh, limited print runs, they have the specialty cards, which would make them, quote, more valuable, but it's high risk, high reward. Here, instead of autographs, we have fetch lands. And instead of patches, we have fetch lands, <laughs> and we have more fetch lands. And they come in different varieties, right? Box topper, this topper, that blah, blah, blah. Full art, extended, regular full art, regular foil. It's so funny when you think about $400 a box for Magic, wow. But in other hobbies like basketball, baseball, football, their hobby boxes have always been, I mean, maybe they've been slightly less before the big boom, but they've always had two different boxes for two different people. Hobby and retail. And it just so happened that Magic copied their concept. So it's not new or, I mean, it's not like I'm surprised that Magic cards are this expensive anymore. They just followed a model that has it, it been has existed for years. And yes, will this model make them more money? Yes. And I don't see why they wouldn't continue to copy the sports cards and then we'll have one of ones we'll have numbered cards, we'll have, you know, autographs. We already have like a proxy autographs Weiss uses. Anyway, hi guys.